Hello everyone, welcome back to the Syntax Byte. My name is Ryan, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Open Route Service, your own self-hosted instance using Docker. So there's numerous reasons you might wanna self-host. Um, you might simply just wanna go above the provided quotas on the free plan, and oppose, as opposed to uh, paying for the API service online, you might just prefer to host it yourself. Um, another reason you might want to self-host is that there are limits on area sizes and things like that with the online API, uh, but self-hosting will allow you to configure to go around those uh, particular limits of the API if you do need those uh, particular features, which is helpful if you have um, needs that just can't be met by the online API, but might be a fit for the open route service itself. Uh, within its technical capabilities. So to get started, the first thing we want to do is confirm that we have the necessary software installed on our computer. So you're going to need Docker. Docker can be installed on Windows, Mac, and Linux. I've done this with the Windows subsystem for Linux, and I'll have a few tips um, throughout the video if you are doing so as well. In this particular video, I am using Linux Mint but you will need to have Docker installed. You can confirm that Docker is correctly installed by typing Docker run hello-world. The dash is important. And if you get hello from Docker, you know Docker is successfully installed. You will also need the Docker Compose plugin, uh, which probably came with Docker. If you type Docker space compose, you should get a printout message of some help. And that means Docker Compose is correctly set up. And the final thing we'll need is git. And so type git, make sure that uh, once again, a help message shows up, not a unknown command message. And we know git is ready to go. So with all those three things set up, we can go ahead and clone the repository using git. Uh, so just head over to github.com, GI science, open route service. And I will have all these links in the description. Go ahead and do a git clone and then paste the URL wherever you'd like it cloned into. Perfect, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and CD into the directory. That's gonna change the working directory of my terminal here to be in the open route service directory. Uh, and then from there, I'm actually gonna CD into Docker as well. So within open route service, it has a specific Docker directory that we'll wanna be in. Now, if you go over to the main page, it does have some uh, folders it would like us to make. So I'm going to copy just this middle command here. The commands are chained here using the double ampersand. I've already CD'd into Docker, so we already covered that one. We're going to make directories. Um, we're going to make all of these directories, and then we're going to modify the Docker compose command as well. I'm just going to copy the make dir command uh, from the GitHub page itself. So with those directories set up, we can go ahead and do basically it says docker compose up the older version of docker compose was done with a dash um, if the space is not working you could try this version as well but generally when you install docker now it comes with the new version so we're just going to go ahead and do docker space compose space up and this is going to go ahead and get that container up and running it's going to take a while as it goes through and does you know some dealing with actually building sort of the map data and stuff like that. Uh, and I will regroup with you once that is finished. Okay, so at this point, the routes are kind of all finished building and the web service is up and running. We can go ahead and confirm quickly that the web service is up and running by just going to localhost 8080. And we see that we have Apache Tomcat so we can try an example query. I'm gonna go ahead and work with this example that's available on the website. I'm gonna paste it. Oh, excuse me. We don't actually wanna paste and go. We just wanna paste. Uh, you'll have to not use HTTPS, just use regular HTTP. 
you're gonna change it to be at localhost 8080 slash ORS open rod service v2 directions driving car you can go ahead and remove the API key parameter we don't need that one and then just remove any spaces that seem to for some reason come with the territory and this will work because it's in a portion of Germany which is included with the sort of default installation so we see that this works um, and we get our directions back so this is fantastic but the issue is that if you don't want to use this particular part of Germany um, then the open route service is going to be pretty much useless to you um, I'd personally like to find some directions in Delaware and the reason I'd like to find some directions in Delaware is because it's a pretty small state that we can very easily import into the server so I'll show you how to download that in a second let's just see what happens how can we confirm that this is correct so let's go and get our point in Delaware okay so at this point I've got my coordinates for Delaware we're gonna be going from a high school to basically downtown Wilmington Delaware and I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in now one thing you'll know is that the coordinates are reversed from Google Maps so this is more of a setup tutorial rather than a tutorial on how to actually use open route service they do have very good documentation online but just remember if it's giving you weird results make sure you have actually flipped the latitude and longitude if you were using Google Maps to find the coordinates. So we'll go ahead and add this in here. Um, just like this. And you will note that it says it could not find a routable point within a radius of 350 meters of the specified coordinate. Now, why is this? This is because by default, the installation only includes map data for a specific area in Germany, which all the examples use as well. So if you do an example, it will work, and then you will try to use it with something else, and it won't work. So how do we fix this and actually get a portion of the map that we're interested in onto our instance of open route server so you actually need the map data to work with you can get the open stream map data for the area that you want from the geofabric download site so I will have this in the description as well so we were using Delaware so I just have to simply go to North America United States of America and then the state of Delaware and we can go ahead and download the state of Delaware and so I'm using Delaware because it's a very small state so basically the larger of the landmass that you want to actually download um, it's going to be first of all larger landmass larger download size and then second of all it's going to take longer to rebuild the map data like rebuild the graphs and stuff for the server because you're just working with you're just giving it more data straight up so they do recommend that you have, I believe it's twice the RAM of the file size. So in this case, we have a file size of like 16 megabytes. So obviously that's not a lot of RAM, but some of these are like a gigabyte, two gigabytes, three gigabytes. So if you have a not very powerful server or not very powerful system, if you're just doing this locally on your desktop like I am, then with some of the larger ones, you could run into issues. So just be aware of that. And don't go downloading like the whole world if you don't need it because you're probably just going to waste a lot of time. If your application only uses, a, you know, the, the United States or if it's only using Canada, just download that. And if you can narrow it to specific states or provinces, that's going to be even more beneficial in terms of just reducing the amount of time that you need to spend downloading files and for your server to start up. So we can go ahead here. I am going to actually move this into the open route service file here and apparently I don't really understand how Linux Mint's window management works but uh, it's always it's, it's been refreshing actually to, to use this little Linux Mint virtual machine I used to use Linux all the time and now I don't but every once in a while it behaves in a way you weren't quite expecting and I don't know if I like that or don't 
Okay, so I like to put my data in Docker, um, but you could put it in like a different a folder in the Docker. I believe you want to use the Docker document, and then you need to edit the configuration file so it knows where to find it. In addition to editing the configuration file, you want to go into graphs and just delete this. And it's going to give me an error because it, first of all, I need to shut down the server. So go ahead and shut down the server. Okay. From there, um, what I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to go open as root, type in my password and we'll get elevated privileges window. Perfect. So from here I can go into graphs and I'm just going to delete this entire car folder. Delete it. You also want to delete what's in elevation cache. And you want to delete the data elevation cache. So I'm just going to delete this. That should be everything you need to delete in order for it to regenerate all those files from the new map data. At this point, what you want to do is go into the docker compose.yml file. I'm going to increase the size a little bit. Okay, so at this point, what you want to do is uncomment this line under volumes and change your osm.pbf to the file that we just did. So we have delaware-latest.osm.pbf. From there, you can save the configuration file. And one thing I've had an issue with when working on Windows is that if I edit this text file in Windows, it will go ahead and use Windows line endings. The problem with that is then Docker is running in the Linux subsystem and it doesn't properly read this file because it's expecting it to have Unix line endings. So if you're on Windows, if you run into an error, or even if you don't, I would highly recommend you, you can go to DOS to Unix, you might have to install it, but then you just do DOS to Unix, uh, docker compose.yml, and that will fix up the file for you and make sure that you don't have any issues. I recommend doing that even if you haven't already run into an error, just to prevent it from happening. But in our case, we're doing everything on a Linux virtual machine, so there's no need to worry. Of course, it's going to save using Unix line innings, and it's running using Unix line innings, and everything's nice. So that is one thing that we don't have to worry about when we're running this in a virtual machine. So now that we've deleted those files and we've changed the location of the file in the docker compose.yml file, we can go ahead and start up the server again using docker compose up and it should regenerate the graphs. Okay, perfect. So at this time it has finished starting up again and regenerating the graphs. So at this point, we should be able to refresh and see that uh, it now works. And we do, so we can see that it is now giving us directions to head southwest on Wilmington Bypass I-495. So we can cl clearly see that you know this is in Delaware, this is in Wilmington, and we are now able to actually provide directions for that. Now you'll notice if we actually go back to this was the Germany one and we refresh you'll notice that we cannot find a routable point within a radius of 350 meters so the graphs have been completely replaced and replaced with the ones that we provided for Delaware no longer are we able to provide directions for Germany now before we finish the video I would just like to show you how to edit the other configuration options associated with running your own Docker instance of the open route service. So all the other configure options, uh, configuration options are here in ORS config. I believe we will have to open this as root. Not really sure why root owns this file, but it does. And uh, yeah, all the other things like, you know, the maximum routes and that sort of thing is in here. The one that I would 
think a lot of people are probably going to want to adjust is by default only the car profile is active so if we try doing uh, for for instance foot walking here Uh, it says it's unable to get an appropriate route profile for the route preference equal to foot walking. So what we need to do is this is an array, this is a JSON file. Uh, we need to add walking below car so that we can get directions for both car and foot walking. Go ahead and save the file and restart the server. So at this point, once again, we see the memory usage and that's how we know that the server is up and running we can go ahead and try foot walking again oh and we do see that unfortunately um, we use the germany coordinates so let's just go ahead and go back sorry a little bit somewhere in the history we definitely have the delaware coordinates let's go ahead to manage history and find, yes, this is the one. Okay, and so now we can go ahead and change driving car to foot walking. The f okay, so I'm not too sure what the particular issue was with that particular um, a set of coordinates but it may have just been beyond the bounds of how far we can go on our feet I'm not too sure um, but at this point I have gone ahead and just selected some different coordinates and we can see that it did give a response for foot walking so at this point it does appear that foot walking is working I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here that is how you can set up docker open route service running with docker on your own uh, self-hosted open route service instance there are many different you know potential settings to play around with however I don't have time to cover all of them in one video nor am I necessarily familiar with all the possible settings and configurations but this is really where open source shines and when I ran into uh, issues with necessarily using the online open route service i was very pleased with the ability to simply set one up but i did find it was a bit uh, tricky to do so that's so that's why i thought i would go ahead and make a step-by-step -step video tutorial uh, for people who may be going through the process as well anyway guys it's been ryan on the syntax bite i hope you enjoyed the video and that it was helpful if you have questions do feel free to leave them down in the comments i have gone through this process myself although i do not work for open route service uh, nor am I necessarily an expert on open route service. So I will try and answer your questions, but no guarantees um, if they are you know, very different from what was shown in the video. Anyway, if you are interested in tech and programming content, feel free to check out the channel and subscribe if it's something that interests you. I do a lot of Excel stuff. So if you're sort of a data simulation person, you may find the channel to be of interest. And until next time, guys, I will see you in the next video.